I've made a sheet for each section. In my case, I have 15 sections. So I've made a sheet for each section and I'm going to drag each section onto a sheet now. Just drag it over and drop it in. Maybe I can make it a little bit larger. Let's see, I'll activate the view. And now an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> That's probably as much as I can do, but let's see. Three sixteenths. Yeah, I don't think that'll fit. But let's see, move it around. Uh, yeah, you know what? If I drop this down enough, <clears throat> I can make it fit. Will show the larger the scale that you can draw it at um, or present it at, the, the better it will uh, be to make sure that everyone who would actually be using your model to construct your uh, house would be able to understand what's going on. So it looks to me, in this direction anyway, it looks to me like. I might be able to make it fit, but let's, and I want to, let's go to the last section. No, let's see. I want a section that goes all the way through the house from left to right. And that would not be it because I can see, I still have my library over here that I wanted to go through. And there it is going through the stairs and this wall lines up. So that that's fine. So now let's go to section 15 and then drag that section 15 over, drop it in and act, what happened there? Oh, I didn't want 15. So I didn't want 15. Uh, I can undo it or I can simply delete it. So which view did I want? Um, 11 was it? Yeah, okay, so I'll go back to section 11, and then I will look at my sheet, section 11. And I'll draw, I'll drag section 11 over to that sheet and drop it in. Activate the view and see if one eighth of an inch is going to fit. And it does. So one eighth of an inch will be my um, scale that I would use for the entire project. And then, of course, I'm going to have to align everything, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to pause the video and actually drag all of these guys into um, my sheets, and then I'll come back and show how to line everything up. So I went through and loaded onto each sheet the corresponding section and then printed them as a PDF. Now as we scroll through, we can see that the house is jumping around on the screen. It's not uh, aligned. So what I would want to do then is go back in and align all of my sections so that they're at exactly the same spot on the screen, even though they're different sections. For example, this point on this house would be the same on every single screen so that it doesn't jump around like that. I've gone through my first uh, six sections because they cut through the house in one direction and I've aligned the sections so that they're at exactly the same place on each sheet. And now when I scroll through, notice how the house is no longer jumping on the screen. And I can see exactly 
each section cut in its exact same spot on the screen, which makes it present itself very well. Now there's other alignments that I need to do. Uh, I need to align my title. Those are all over the place. I, probably, I definitely need to bring these section lines down. And what I'm going to do in the demonstration is show how I did this, how easily I did this, and how nice it, I just really like the way that it pops across the screen like that. It's very clear where we're cutting through the sections, and I like that. I'm very, very happy with that. So there's a, a feature in Revit that we can use. It's called the grid guide. It's in part of the view tab. It's called the grid guide. And when I put the grid guide on, I have this grid will appear on every single sheet if I turn it on, of course. But it doesn't print because in the print uh, setup, uh, we've said don't print. It, it defaults to don't print the grid guide, so we don't. We can leave it turned on. It's not going to show up when, when we print things out. But basically, if you take a look at this, we zoom in. I've I've created a point on the model by using my reference planes, and then I've moved the actual section so that that those reference planes actually line up to the corner of of my grid. So if I go to section seven, I have put in reference planes on my floor plan, and I might be able to use this point right here as my uh, location for my grid. So let's see if that'll work. Uh, I'll go up to my grid guide, turn it on, and I have all these to choose from. Now grid one was the one that I used for sections one through six, and I'm going to create a new one, and we'll call it grid guide seven, that's fine, and there it is. And now I'm going to take it, and I'm going to make it, I like to move it outside of the border, so if I need to grab it, it's, it's, it's more difficult to grab it over here than it is to grab it over here once you're outside of the border. So what I'm trying to do is just align my grid here. And now I'll just use my arrow keys instead of trying to use the mouse. So watch what happens. The grid comes up. Whoops. And the grid goes over. Now, If that's where I wanted my section to be, this looks like uh, really I don't want it there. So I'm going to click on my house and I'm going to move the house over more to the side like that. So when I put my levels in, we'll be able to see it. And then I'll grab this grid guide and I'll just move him. See how I can grab it now? It's much easier to grab it. And I'll just pull him over to there and then use my arrow keys on the keyboard to line it up. Let's zoom in even a little bit closer. This, the more you zoom in, the more uh, accurate or finite the, the grid becomes. So, all right, let's say that's really good. Now I'm going to go to section eight and I'm going to go to the view tab, turn on my grid guide and say, I want grid number seven. So I'll say, okay, there it appears. This particular house looks pretty good in the one direction. I'll fix it in the other direction. zoom in a little bit more, just to be a little bit more accurate. Okay. So now we go to 
section nine. Do the same thing, I'm at the view tab, I turn my grid guide on, I want number seven, I say okay. Click on my view. Using the arrow keys to get it close. And then I'll zoom in there real close and see if I can do a little bit better. So I want that grid to come up to there. I want that grid to go over to there. That's pretty good, but you can zoom in and be even more accurate. That looks good. And that looks good. So I'm not going to do all 15, all the way to section 15, but I will do one more and then stop the video and uh, complete the exercise and make a PDF of it and then show it to everybody. So back to the view tab, back to the grid guide. Grid seven is the one I want. Click on the view and try to move it over approximately where it's supposed to be and then zoom in closer to get it not even whoops not even close here am i this guy's supposed to line up way down here okay now i can zoom in much closer and move it over and move it down and then zoom in to try to be even more accurate. So when you submit your uh, sections in a PDF, there'll be one sheet or one file and I'll zip through it and I'll be able to tell if you've done this part of the requirement of your project or not. I won't be able to see your um, grid guide because it doesn't print, but I will be able to see if your house jumps around on the screen and that will not be a good thing. After going through section seven through 15 and using that grid guide, I was able to align everything and print it out. And I'll just show you how nicely that doesn't seem to be jumping around, except for, of course, when it's cutting through a different part of the house but everything is aligned and it wasn't very difficult or or time consuming uh, to do that and it looks really good because much of our presentation to our clients could very well be uh, not on paper but actually on uh, a pdf looking at it just like i am right now and it's so much more professional to be able to have everything all lined up like that, then have your your sections all jump around the screen. So that's that. And one, and of course, we're always uh, we want to always use the the reason that I guess with what I'm saying is the reason that we do so many sections as is necessary is it allows us to see what we thought was okay maybe isn't, and you can see that my here, my transoms don't line up. And here, I don't think I have a fine resolution, so I'm not seeing any of the detail. And so actually here is not fine resolution either, is it? And as we go through, looks like I have a lot of places where my sections in Revit, my sections, when you cut a section, it defaults to the course resolution. And I would have to go back in, of course, and change all of that. But for your presentation to me, this is the beginning. Now we would do the same thing with our grid guides to get our titles uh, in the same, exactly the same spot. And we would want the uh, section keys, see how the sections aren't jumping around. But I have to move the sections because they're inside, they're, they extend beyond the border and the titles are in the wrong spot. We don't want the titles jumping all over uh, either. So we would make a new grid guide and establish where we want our uh, our uh, title to be. And it would, it would be in the exact same spot. 
uh, at the same length. Uh, the only thing that would change would be the name. So I'll stop it here. <laughs>